Frankie. We did all we could for the man. The Irishman isn't just another gangster film from Martin Scorsese. And you're late. What? You're late. So you're charged with a gun? With a knife you run? It's the culmination of six films and over 46 years of producing and directing them. Starting with Mean Streets, which came out in 1973, up until 2019 when he finally released The Irishman. Scorsese has cast some of the best gangsters across this time. Robert De Niro, Harvey Keitel, Ray Liotta, Joe Pesci, Leonardo DiCaprio, Daniel Day-Lewis, Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino. All great actors, no doubt. You let him sell insurance to his fucking fathers! I look at The Irishman not just as the final of his gangster films, but as a love letter to the gangster and mafia genre. You know how strong I made you? To be perfectly honest, the first time I watched it, I was left frustrated. The third act felt way too long, and I felt steered away from the main tenets of the film. And the CGI techniques they used for the aging look of the actors just felt off and distracting. Actually, I'm looking for a little favor. For him, not for me. But when you look past that, especially at specific scenes in the film, you get to see real masters, real craftsmen at the top of their game. The only reason they agreed to this was out of respect to me. Performing roles they were possibly born for, or at least perfected over years of practice. I don't, I don't know how we got away with that. You don't get away with that. You do that, you die. Being able to act without ever saying a word. Wait, wait. That's bullshit. Okay, hear me out. This is beautiful. The greatest skill an actor can possess is the ability to communicate without speaking. Dialogue is an easy way to create exposition. Well, then we could, well, Jimmy, then we can do it any way you want. We can do it, do it at your house. We can do it any way you want, wherever you're comfortable. The lake? But a distinction must be made between expression and a look. An expression, you see, is just a reaction. I'll sit here, you take the phone. No, no. I'll sit there. It lets us understand how a character feels in that moment. A look, though, is communicating an action, not a reaction. We'll bring you back after you get your car. If it sounds a bit difficult to understand, it's even more difficult to perform. Okay. Let's go through three of my favorite scenes to see how this works in The Irishman. Scene one. You've got a good friend here. So, this is Frank's first time meeting Angela Bruno. What are you doing in Delaware? Bombing out a laundry place. Frank took on a job putting a laundry service company out of commission for whispers. The other whispers. Played by Paul Herman. What he didn't know is Angelo had a stake in the business. So under normal rules, that would have been the end of Frank. However, Russell has vouched for Frank. And this scene is an opening for Frank to join the crew, if he can get through the meeting. Now, I want to focus on the looks Joe Pesci delivers in this scene. In the shot, reverse shot, we see Pesci eight times. He never says a single word of dialogue. It's all looks. My three favorites are as follows. The look after Frank tries to crack a joke about the job he did. Bombing out a laundry place. It's not funny and it doesn't go down well. Frank has the option to join the crew, but that comes with some rules. Namely, that orders are passed down and you follow orders. You don't do jobs on the side, no matter what. The second is when we cut back to Russell after Angelo had said multiple times that whispers won't be needing the money back. I didn't check. I'm sorry, I should have checked. Can I give him his money back? He won't need it. You can keep it. No, I don't want no trouble. I just give it back to him and I'm, I'm okay. He won't need it. 
This look is my favorite. It's just so clear what he is saying and trying to get Frank to understand. And finally, the last look is the smallest smile, easily missed. He gives Frank once Angelo admits if it wasn't for Russell, Frank would have been killed already. You got a good friend here. You don't know how good a friend you got. Well, I, I know. No, you don't know. Look at these three looks. There's almost nothing separating them, yet they convey such strong actions, even through this stupid CGI. The second scene is another Joe Pesci masterclass. Here he only says a couple of words, but it's probably one of the greatest action inferring looks you could ask for in a gangster film. Crazy Joe Gallo, played by Sebastian Maniscalco, steps out of line when questioning Russell's membership of the Italian League. Hey, what are you doing with that? You really believe in that bullshit league? Frank has to intervene to cool the situation down. Now, although Joe is a boss and can do pretty much what he wants, one thing he cannot do is disrespect another boss. And Russell isn't going to let it slide. Well, it's not that. It's, uh, it's a tag. Joe, Joe. What'd I say? No, no, no. What'd I say? Joe, 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 Joe. Now listen. You can't say that stuff right back to you. Joe, you can't do Why not? The look he delivers says one thing and one thing only. The editing here is also amazing. In case you didn't pick up on the look, the following scene clearly gives it away. Perfect. The final scene I want to discuss is Frank's appreciation dinner. One of the longest scenes in the movie running at 16 minutes and 20 seconds. It's really the main turning point in the film for Jimmy Hoffa. The powers that be feel like Hoffa hasn't been working with them easily. This guy is not even the goddamn president. He's holding up people's loans. Are you sure? I'm sure. And Russell and Frank have to intervene and consult with Hoffa to try and sort it out. You don't need money, do you? It's not about money. If it's not about money, then I'm really having trouble understanding because I don't know what all the talk is about. It's my union. Scorsese and the director of photography, Rodrigo Prieto, do such a great job at showing us how three characters watch each other as the meetings take place. Great POV and reaction shots. The greatness of the scene is that Frank and Russell know that Hoffa isn't going to change his mind and operate differently. You might be demonstrating a failure to show appreciation. I'm not showing appreciation. According to, you know, some people... I went to school for five fucking years. Yes, you did. Five fucking years! Essentially signing his own death warrant. But still, they try to convince him. Tony told the old man to tell me, to tell you, mm -hmm. it's what it is. Please listen to me. They wouldn't dare. Special mention for the watch that Frank receives from Hoffa, symbolizing his own time running out. The scene is so well constructed that even though we move around the room, sitting in on chats between characters, we finally end up at the conclusion for Frank realizing that Hoffa can't be saved. Listen to me. At the end, there's only one thing that's real. This is my union. This is my union, Frank. Very simple when you say it that way. He goes from hope to worry to acceptance. All through looks. It's one of my favorite scenes in the film. I could watch it a hundred times. <laughs> 